They know that there's free, unlimited power in the universe that we could all use, but they won't give it to us because it would set us free from them. And whoever controls energy controls the people who need the energy. Bio-liberty, uh, I guess a little background necessary to explain what Bio Liberty is all about. My name's Kevin Curley and I was fortunate enough to buy this piece of property about six months before Katrina. Had some rental cottages on it so we were going to get those up and running and over time develop a little family compound. But a storm really changed that. When we first arrived at the property the day after Labor Day, eight days after the storm, we had to crawl over and under maybe 60 logs crossing the driveway. And, uh, and that was pretty, pretty bizarre. I mean, the, you know, trees that were snapped halfway up, trees that were uprooted, trees that were bent, all kind of directions. We had nine foot of water. The water came in and went out fast, which is different from what happened in the city. Within six hours, all the water was gone. And there was about an inch layer of marsh muck everywhere. Serendipitously, I run into some people that are looking for a place to camp. They're doing relief work, and it's just worked out pretty super. Just after the storm, about November, we finally were able to chop our way in here and, and start cleaning out the property. United Peace Relief uh, was bringing in medical, trained medical people and manning the free clinic in New Orleans. Veterans for Peace were uh, spending the money that we had raised uh, to do relief work on different grassroots organizations and they were sending volunteers in to help common ground, emergency communities. Plenty International who was with us from day one. They came and started working out of here for a while and then we set up another camp in Duloc. And then now they've bought a house in Araby and are rebuilding homes in Lower Ninth Ward and, and in St. Bernard Parish. Walking to New Orleans was a march from Mobile, Alabama to New Orleans to call attention to the cost of the war and the, its effect on the Katrina Rita relief. So it's been a well-used space since the storm. The population fluctuated from 5 to 20 at times and uh, went on for a year plus. The first year we volunteered, we mucked and gutted houses and brought in food and supplies and things like that, more immediate stuff. They know that there's free unlimited power in the universe that we could all use, but they won't give it to us because it would set us free from them. And whoever controls energy controls the people who need the energy. Volunteer efforts started waning, or people got more entrenched in their own buildings or whatever. Then we started concentrating on the property, cleaning it up, and getting it ready for rebuilding. The property is 27 acres, 17 of which are marsh. Actually, marsh, we got 10 acres of height. It's a beautiful ecosystem here. It hasn't been touched by industry. So there's a lot of exchange of information going on in the camp. BioLiberty came out of these discussions with uh, volunteer groups and the different people that come in here from all over the country. We had a biodiesel bus from Maine. That was Kevin's first exposure to biodiesel. So the idea was to start BioLiberty as a demonstration project using this property as basically the backdrop for using uh, solar energy, uh, thermal energy, biodiesel energy. We are building a biodiesel lab at Bio Liberty for BioLiberty.net. Once we get the grease and uh, the potassium and the methanol and some wiring, some lights, a few more tanks, some tubing, some wiring, but 
We're in the process, we're kicking it off today. Coming out of the slop sinks faucet, we put a T, like a hose T, so one side can come into here and one side goes up on the roof. Well, if that hot water tank comes tomorrow, we could actually put that together pretty quick and we could be brewing Friday. I've been making fuel for boy, about three years in my home in Philadelphia and for a couple of different nonprofits in Philadelphia as well. You can go lobby Congress and you can talk about alternative energy and you can you know, write your letters and everything else you can until you're blue in the face, but this is a very real grassroots uh, type of process you can do that'll help to make a difference. I'm one of the dumbest people I know and I haven't bought fuel in nearly three years. I've made probably oh, close to 6,000 gallons of fuel by now. Biodiesel, when it burns in the vehicle, the vehicle likes it. If you have an old Mercedes that goes clack, 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 the clack and stops because it's a super lubricant and it's, so it's better for the engine. It's better for the environment because the sulfur dioxide emissions, which is your major component of acid rain, absolutely drops down to zero. I work with two nonprofits in Philadelphia. One is a home for recovering drug addicts in North Philadelphia, and the other one is a community sustainable agriculture farm. And in each case, they make fuel, and if you want fuel, you go write a check to support the good work Sister Margaret does with the drug addicts in North Philadelphia, and they will give you fuel as a thank you for your generous contribution, kind of like the tote bag you get from PBS or something of that nature. This is a small sample of our first batch of fuel. You spend a day processing, heating it and processing the transesification, a day washing it in those two wash barrels, and a day drying it, or a little less than a day actually. And the idea is each day, a load of fuel, a batch of fuel that you're making moves from one step to the next, to the next, to the next. So in theory anyway, if things are going right, every day you can harvest a batch of fuel and start a batch of fuel. Allow tank A to mist until 2100 or so. Okay. As long as it's not turning into a white soapy emulsion, continuing to mist hurts nothing. Concerning batch two, yeah. sorry, zero, zero, 002, at 130 degrees, heat goes off. So we've mixed our concoction of isopropyl alcohol, Phenol red, one milliliter. Redfish Trading Company, uh, Southside Cafe, and Veras in Slidell have contributed to this batch of Bio Liberty Gator Grease. There's one. Didn't quite turn. There's two. Turned it two. A little less than two. Good. Titration value is two. And we calculate. Very handy website, Collaborative Biodiesel Tutorial. And it's calculated at 16 gallons of methanol and 96.1. Is our KOH? I think we've got a handle on it. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm sure you're going to get a few phone calls from That's me cool. in the future. Well, it was fortuitous that I called you that first time. It was perfect. Time. While you guys were sitting there talking about it, we had Bruce there and Kevin, and we were talking about biodiesel. And I said, you know, there there are guys out there that uh, that build these things, and you know, we just need to put the word out there that. We're looking to build it, and I think we'd get some help. As I'm telling him this, you call me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't figure it right. And say, I hear you're looking for a biodiesel engineer. Our capacity with the tanks that we have set up now, we can do 2,400 gallons a month. We're going to be giving it away for a donation to the organization, BioLiberty. And BioLiberty will use it to pay its employees, which is all vet veteran to uh, clear lots and to make biodiesel that we could all use but they won't give it to us because it would set us free from them and whoever controls energy controls the people who need the energy if you know anything about a little bit about electricity a little bit about plumbing and a little bit about your chemistry lessons in high school, you could do this. It's, it's no brain surgery. I used to do brain surgery and this is not it. <laughs> so far we've had 100% success with the restaurants we've talked to, explaining what we do as a business, employing veterans, homeowners, they're 
being fined a hundred dollars a day for not cutting their lot until it reaches the asset assessed value of the lot in which time they seize it so the fines are there to in for incentives for people to take care of their lots but it doesn't address the fact that they're phys the people are just physically not and financially incapable of clearing the lot they like to call it the good neighbor plan so you're going to ask a 85 year old lady that's been living alone in the lower ninth ward for the last 45 years to clear her lot with eight feet of weeds it's not going to happen we've cleared 50 or 60 lots in the lower ninth ward the lower ninth ward's got 5,000 plus homes in it put five guys to work we'd have it done in two months we're going to haul the tractor down there today and do some more lots and so far we've been doing it as a volunteer effort. One good thing is a byproduct of biodiesel is glycerin and it is biodegradable. So um, actually if we could find a soap maker we could supply them and then we just create another job. We've got our biodiesel plant up and running and uh, we're going to do some vet training and employ vets and uh, just cooked the first batch last week. Um, so everything's fallen into place. Alternative energy, biodiesel, solar, geothermal, all of that doesn't cost a lot. You know, biodiesel doesn't kill anybody to get it, doesn't kill anybody to make it, doesn't kill anybody to use it. So I think it's uh, not only the green thing to do, but it's the right thing to do. You know, save your grease. Give it to a biodiesel guy, uh, you're saving lives. I've done this, as I say, the nonprofit aspect really appeals to me, helping nonprofits to make fuel, use that avenue to be able to sell the fuel on the market, so to say. Greens Grow Farm in Philadelphia, they get oil from fairly high end restaurants. They, uh, they deliver organic produce and such to restaurants in Philadelphia who in turn give them their used cooking oil from the restaurant so it's kind of again that whole cycle thing you know recycling the oil through the uh, same place that they get the vegetables from. I was planning to come down to New Orleans do some work one time or another here soon again so uh, this is just kind of more up my avenue and hopefully uh, more helpful to the folks down here but no, this is a volunteer aspect. Good karma. We're not getting any government assistance we get a few donations on the internet you know, sweat equity. We built what we what we're doing now. We're going to utilize the biodiesel we make in, in our trucks, and we hope to be able to franchise, like cottage industry size, these biodiesel plants. So we can enable people, empower an entrepreneur to make the biodiesel, and hopefully, going to be able to use that to power uh, a generator in some developments that we're looking at. Um, we're gonna power our own generator. I'm gonna build a net zero energy home here on the bayou. Concrete construction, solar power, geothermal heating and cooling, and the biodiesel uh, generator will be supplemental for our power. And if it all works, then we're gonna try to take that concept and grow Bayou Liberty into a green construction company, utilizing uh, veteran training program to develop labor. The types of building methods we're going to use will prove our point. We should be built uh, within the year with the house and our bio the rest of our biodiesel plant and then this time next year we'll be uh, demonstrating that. So basically at the end of the day this thing's going to be totally self-sufficient. Not only is the building going to be so totally self-sufficient but everything on the compound is going to basically run off the earth, solar, geo, and bio. So that's a pretty industrious project. So we're taking that concept, what's being developed here, and we're bringing that over to New Orleans, uh, basically in the Lower Ninth Ward initially. And we have about 100 families that are interested in building sustainable, affordable homes that we have designed and we're going to incorporate uh, community solar, community so ge geothermal. So we're going to have the elements of not only sustainability but also employment and transferable skills. The earth has a constant temperature 
and depending on where you are up north it might be like 60 degrees 55 degrees here in Louisiana it's around 65 to 70 you take the temperature of the water in this case and you use that for your heating and cooling the houses that we're talking about over in the lower ninth are going to be what they call near ze near zero net energy homes where their utility bills will run around 20 or 30 dollars a month so you couple that with a sustainable built homes and we're using concrete and polystyrene your insurance is going to be lower your mortgage may be a little higher and when i'm talking about a little higher i'm talking about 10 12 dollars a month so you couple that with your lack of utility bills, your low insurance costs, and every month you're paying less out of your pocket to live. Live affordable, sustainable, and environmentally friendly. They had a meeting yesterday with the Department of Energy and they're very excited about seeing something happen because they can't get anything done. Is the city uh, helping? No. No, city's not helping, local government's not helping, uh, federal government's not helping. They would all like to help, but it, it, nothing has happened so far. We're doing it all through the grassroots effort. I've jumped through hoops until I'm freaking dizzy. Um, but again, it all kind of seems to be working out. Make it happen and then have these guys come back and say, how did you do it? And then we'll just take that and show them how it's done. Without the political maneuverings, we're not, we're not politically connected. We're just making it happen. But first we're gonna start here and you know, prove it on ourselves. We're gonna use the property, build the housing the way we are, are offering it to others. We're gonna build it out here, test it, prove it, and use it as a demonstration. So this will be a solar powered, biodiesel powered, and thermal heated and cooled uh, property completely off the grid in fact we'll be generating power and selling it to our neighbors and turning the meter backwards as they say we had plans to do some solar green building here even before the storm what's crazy about the storm is that it's just accelerated really a lot of my personal plans and enhanced them and brought the right people, the right souls into my life. Now, actually, things are getting done. That's awesome. Thanks to all the souls that came through here, volunteering, their time, living primitively, uh, is very inspiring. We're dreaming about a big project in the Lower Ninth Ward. We want sustainable building for lower income people, our retired or elderly, uh, kind of developing, help them develop their community back. And it really, it could structurally be better than ever if, if, the, if people will come back and, and want to come back and can get jobs and can have housing, then these communities will, will heal. They'll be different. They'll be different. Hopefully they'll be better. Hopefully there'll be more opportunity. Uh, it's, it's actually you know, very exciting. Um, I'm a big believer in dreaming and dreams have been coming true for me so I ain't gonna stop now. We can afford to get the equipment we need to do our small scale operation and then if we're meant to get bigger, we will. We'll, we'll figure out how to do it. Uh, especially if I get a bunch of people dreaming about it, then hell, that kind of energy will make shit happen for sure. Global Broadcast News. And the reason you're not hearing about this truth that we're uh, showing you today is that the media is controlled and if you think that's silly then you just don't have your eyes open and that's why we're here today to help you open your eyes to see the truth mobile broadcast news really changed that when we first arrived at the property day after labor day eight days after the storm we had to crawl over and under maybe 60 logs crossing the driveway and uh Pretty, pretty bizarre. I mean, the you know trees that were snapped halfway up, trees that were uprooted, trees that were bent, all kind of directions. We had nine foot of water. The water came in and went out fast, which is different from what happened in the city. Within six hours, all the water was gone, and there was about an inch layer of five to twenty at times, and uh, went on for a year plus. The first year, we volunteered. We mucked and gutted houses and. 
brought in food and supplies and things like that, more immediate stuff. They know that there's free unlimited power in the universe that we could all use, but they won't give it to us because it would set us free from them. And whoever controls energy controls the people who need the energy. ground, emergency communities, plenty international who was with us from day one. They came and started working out of here for a while and then we set up another camp in Duloc. And then now they've bought a house in Araby and are rebuilding homes in Lower Ninth Ward and, and in St. Bernard Parish. Walking to New Orleans was a march from Mobile, Alabama to New Orleans to call attention to the cost of the war and the, its effect on the Katrina Rita relief. So it's been a well-used space since the storm. The population fluctuated from... They know that there's free unlimited power in the universe that we could all use, but they won't give it to us because it would set us free from them. And whoever controls energy controls the people who need the energy. Bio-liberty, uh, I guess a little background necessary to explain what Bahia Liberty is all about. My name's Kevin Curley and I was fortunate enough to buy this piece of property about six months before Katrina. Had some rental cottages on it so we were going to get those up and running and over time develop a little family compound. But a storm, marsh muck everywhere. Serendipitously I run into some people that are looking for a place to camp. They're doing relief work and it's just worked out pretty super. Just after the storm, about November, we finally were able to chop our way in here and, and start cleaning out the property. United Peace Relief uh, was bringing in medical, trained medical people and manning the free clinic in New Orleans. Veterans for Peace were uh, spending the money that we'd raised uh, to do relief work on different grassroots organizations and they were sending volunteers in to help.